Ahoy and welcome to this narrow boat adventure. So today I'm here on David's boat. David from Cruising the Cut, uh, the YouTube channel. If you haven't heard of it, where have you been? Uh, David has very kindly had me come to stay for three days um, to help with a bit of cruising. Um, we're heading from Stone through Stoke-on-Trent to the other side to a place called Milton and uh, I'm going to take you all along with me for the cruise. Um, there's a couple of things that were things I have not seen in other areas of the canal so David's going to come in with a little bit of information to tell you about how those things work and what they are and uh, basically we're just going to have a lovely day cruising um, so join us now. Can I just have a peer around for anything that might be odd or you know unusual? It's time I changed all the oil um, drip pads at the bottom, they're absolutely soaked. Hello and welcome to my channel. If any of you have come over here from David's, thank you so much for coming over here. I do hope you will like what I have to show you. You may find it a little different from David's as he is a professional television quality broadcaster whereas I am much more of the YouTube school of editing, which as you may have noticed can be a little bumpy at times. But I hope you'll bear with me and enjoy this lovely journey. You may have noticed that the locks are quite narrow and that is because they are single locks, which is one of my favorites actually. I've only ever seen single locks in uh, the Nottingham arm of the Grand Union when we were headed to the River Neen and I, I like them a lot. I like that they are smaller, they take less time to fill, the, the gates are less heavy, uh, they're just more fun. Ah, and this is another thing I enjoy to do, foraging. I spotted overhead a lovely damson tree and David, the good sport that he is, let me borrow one of his stools so I could pick some damsons uh, that are, damsons are sort of a wild plum and they are one of my favourite September fruits. Uh, this is a great time of year to pick damsons. There's lots of ripe damsons at the moment. This was very early in the year to pick damsons actually when I helped David. I even got him picking some damsons too. He's a lot taller than me so that was quite useful. And then we carried on and as we did, David tried his first ever damson. Something to bear in mind with damsons is they do have a pip. Does he like it? Oh yes, I think he does. And of course, in the lock onwards and upwards. Now when we were at this lock, I spotted um, these planks of wood and I didn't know what they are so here's David to explain it. The idea of the stop planks is very simple. Sometimes the Canal and River Trust need to drain a section of canal for maintenance works but some of the canal pounds can be miles and miles long and you don't want the whole pound to be completely drained. It would leave boats on the mud and it would cause all sorts of problems but what they can do at certain strategic points is drop large planks of wood, stock planks, across the width of the canal at pinch points and then simply drain the section of canal between two sets of stock planks and then they can do whatever works they need to do with the minimum of inconvenience to the people outside those stock planks. This is possibly my dream house so I'm just going to pause. It has a huge garden, a dry dock, a house and also moorings and of course nearby a gate randomly in the canal. This is the Wedgwood factory. Um, it's actually quite a famous ceramics manufacturer. They've been around a very long time. Um, they used to uh, deliver their ceramics by canal boat as less of them broke than when they sent them by horse and cart. So that should illustrate that to you. Here we are just really in the centre of Stoke, so kind of near the train station at this point. Um, this is where I cycled from once I was in the right direction. This is a museum and then in the next lock you can see there's a warehouse that used to be used by canal people and they used to have a roof on this lock and use it to gauge how much goods people were carrying in their butties and they would charge them a toll based on how much they were carrying.
of course David ever the professional driving and vlogging at the same time. This is actually a dizziness warning for you because David does some fantastic manoeuvring here and the only way I could possibly show it to you was by standing in the roof and turning around quite a lot. So if you're someone who suffers from dizziness easily these next couple of shots may not be for you. As you can see here we've come out of the right hand side and we're headed into the left hand side. David is doing a fantastic job of making a massive U-turn in the middle of the canal. And uh, it's a very pretty spot actually. It seems like you can drive into a dry dock where you can see there's that little middle section. And of course David, ever the professional, didn't actually need me to help at all with this massive U-turn. Um, so I could just stand on the roof. It was quite windy, so I was very impressed. Yesterday, I cycled 15 minutes in the wrong direction from Stoke train station. Actually, went quite significantly further up that way. Oh. I better sit down so David can move, see where he's going. Um, so yeah, I went all the way up to a water park and another marina that I'm sure you'll see in a few days time in David's vlog. Uh, well, I guess a few weeks time, but a few days cruise from where we currently are because he said when he comes back, he's gonna go that other way. Uh, yeah. We stopped very briefly to throw away some rubbish and then carried on under this bridge to a staircase lock. David's going to explain that too. Staircase locks are quite rare, there aren't that many of them around, but it's where one lock directly empties into another lock without a pound between it. So the, the bottom gates of one lock are the top gates of another and hence one goes into the next goes into the next. So when you are going up or going down, the one thing you do have to do is make sure the entire flight is set correctly so if you're going in at the bottom, you want that one empty and all the other ones in the staircase full. And if you're going in at the top, you want the top one full and all the other ones empty. Hang on, let's think that's the, you've got to think about it. That will empty into that one, which is then full, which will empty into that one. Yes, so the top one full and all the other ones empty. And you need to set the whole flight before you go in. Here we are in the staircase lock, which it was very sunny at this point and a staircase lock is huge so it was actually very difficult for me to show you what was happening in one shot because it's just so large. It was really very impressive, I've never seen anything like it. Of course, at this point, we are really starting to head further and further out of Stoke-on-Trent. See, this one's just making sure that we're leaving. And stay out! <laughs> we passed through this lovely um, park. Then as we came around a corner, we were suddenly treated to this beautiful view. And then this lovely view. And then a dad dead badger appeared. <laughs> David didn't want me to put the dead badger in my vlog, but I couldn't resist. <laughs> ah, now we have a swing bridge. Um, 
There's something about me, a small child inside, who delights in operating a swing bridge. I love pushing all the buttons, I love disrupting traffic, and this one I particularly loved, the water shining onto the swing bridge itself. Of course, I let the cars through again. We're about in Milton now. We decided to moor up for the evening. Back to David to tell you how it's like to have me staying aboard. I'm quite both a, a private sort of vigil. My home is my home, and I'm always a little bit anxious if people come aboard. So strangers, definitely not, not comfortable. If it's people I know, it's fine. But then there's always the, a logistical issue in that it is a small space and there's only one proper bedroom. So if they're coming aboard overnight, now you've got to make up the bed, which is fine. The dinette is designed to be turned into a bed. But suddenly everything just becomes that little bit more cramped because now the dinette isn't a dinette anymore and then you've got to find space for that person to put their bags because they'll have an overnight bag or whatever and even just because normally it's just me on the boat walking to and from suddenly with two people on the boat you're squeezing past each other and you realize what it must be like for couples on a boat and I do think that if I had a partner they'd need their own boat. <laughs> Jasmine has been the best guest anyone could hope for um, polite and out of the way and considerate and cooked up a fantastic meal last night so uh, Jasmine you're very welcome back at any time. Thank you so much for watching if you would like to watch David's perspective we did work quite hard to make sure we weren't filming all of the same things um, you can go on over to David's channel uh, Cruising the Cut and I'm sure if this video has just come out his video will have just come out also but I will also put a link in the description of this video for David's video if you're watching this a bit later on. Uh, that's how you would find it. Thank you very much to David for having me. It was very kind of you to have me in your lovely home. What a lovely boat it is. If you aren't subscribed to David, you should go over and do that. Please let me know in the description what you think of having people come to visit. How many days is your maximum? Mine is three days, three nights. I'd love it if you'd like to join us on another narrowboat adventure. You can click subscribe down below and join us then. And if you would like to, I also post my videos on Facebook as uh, sometimes the YouTube subscription uh, doesn't show all the videos we've subscribed to. So that's another option. Um, thanks for watching. Have a lovely day. Bye.